Hi, this is Little Dwarf, uh, playing games while rambling incoherently into the microphone. Why? Because I can. We're back in the Middle Earth. I just forced the elves to accept the ceasefire, although they will be back probably next turn trying to kill me. Well, such is the circle of life, whatever. I will be sieging the settlement next turn with them. Uh, what else is there to do? Mm. Oh, it's actually the catapult has been prepared, so... Mm. I may continue my offensive. No more moves. Yes, general. Damn it! I used to. I need to somehow manage my units so that um, I can stop this army from getting deeper into my territory because most of the regions are rather undefended. Armor. Uh, train. Try some vanguards. They are okay. all around a good unit uh, with this uh, large shield and, um, and the ability to form the studio even, which looks really bad as I will show you uh, sometime. Um, okay, so it seems uh, that's enough for this turn. End turn. Oh, so the three peoples have broken alliance, actually. It seems the sneaky bastards were already preparing to, to kill me, even though uh, I haven't even taken the, the city yet. Mm, what else to do here? Yeah, I need to chase down this army because really I can't afford to to have it roam around. Now that I have this unit of berserkers, I should be able to easily deal with it. So maybe I can take those units from here because the goblins here have been exterminated, so there is no threat to the city. I will also take the general and only leave these human units to keep uh, public order. And that will help me reinforce my assault on the Misty Mountains to retake uh, Khazad-dum. But first, uh, let us capture Gram from the goblins. Besieging settlement. Actually, this whole war going on now with the goblins is a good place to resume the um, sort of history of the dwarves. Uh, when last we finished, um, we were at the end of the second age. Sauron has been defeated by the, by the last alliance of elves, and men and dwarves. Uh, and dwarves were at the beginning of the Third Age, dwarves were doing really quite well. Uh, Khazad Dum, their capital, uh, was uh, blossoming, the trade was growing, mm, they were recovering Mithril, which, were, which is this uh, marvelous metal, which is stronger than steel, but, uh, but uh, very light, so uh, you can make uh, wonderful armor out of it, and it is really light, and it uh, doesn't encumber you, so uh, Mithril was known also as uh, um, I believe something to do with silver. I, for, I forgot true silver or or something. I will check it later. But yeah, because of Mithril, they were getting incredibly rich, and they um, they had vast domains over the mountains, um, and overall they were doing you know. Uh, they were doing really well, but as the saying goes, uh, pride strikes before the fall, so that was exactly uh, the case in this scenario, because the dwarves uh, dug deeper and deeper in their search for Mithril, um, and they got it, but they also got something else, which... Uh, they weren't planning for, and that was uh, the Balrog. Uh, Balrogs were 
those ancient spirits of fire and uh, fire and shadow they were uh, they were they were actually mayar corrupted, corrupted mayar so they, they were sort of of the same level of power the same type of being as for example gandalf and saruman but they were corrupted and they served uh, the lord of uh, melkor the or Morgoth, as he was later known, the, the evil, um, rebellious Valor. So, yeah, so one of those Balrogs has somehow survived the, the earlier wars, and he was hiding um, in khazad and the dwarves uncovered it, and it basically destroyed their whole kingdom over a couple of years, killed their king during the sixth uh, so, uh, so it was also afterwards known because of that as uh, Durin's Bane, because it killed uh, King Durin and forced the dwarves to basically to abandon Moria, the Mo uh, abandon khazad which is at this point it has become known as Moria, which means um, Black Pit in the language of the elves. Uh, so, um, yeah, so they were forced to, to flee from khazad and they were wandering, uh, you know, around the Middle Earth, not sure, um, not sure what to do, really, until at some point they found, they founded the uh, kingdom under the mountain, which was the kingdom of Erebor, uh, in the, in the Lonely Mountain. And once again, they were doing quite well, although it wasn't as prestigious or as wealthy as Kazad once was. It was a really ni nice location, with uh, rich with minerals and uh, and various um, you know various treasures. And they were trading with the Northmen, the men of of Dale, the nearby city. So they were also growing very rich. But once again, uh, the riches were the cause of the of their downfall because uh, because they attracted uh, Smog the dragon, and Smog um, has um, attacked Erebor and uh, basically forced once again. Uh, he first destroyed the city of Dale, then he attacked Erebor and basically forced the dwarves once again to, to flee. Um, and once again, the dwarves uh, wandered uh, the Middle Earth and didn't really know what to do with themselves. The king of, the, of Durin's folk, king of the dwarves at the time, was um, the king was Thror. And Thror uh, was enamored with this idea that, uh, that they could somehow return to Kasadun, to Moria. Although, maybe he just wanted to, to look upon his ancestral home, uh, you know, to, to reminisce about uh, the glory days, now that, once again, their new home has fallen. Nevertheless, uh, the dwarves went to, to the gates of khazad which was which was, at this point, uh, you know, over, overtaken by orcs. So, Thror, uh, went up to the to the to the gate, and then he was answered by uh, was answered by the chieftain of the orcs, saying that uh, they do not they do not welcome beggars into their halls, and uh, if he wants some uh, you know if he wants some uh, uh, some alms, he should uh, you know ask for it as befits a beggar, and then. Uh, the dwarves, uh, the orcs, uh, tossed him a, a pouch of, of coins as a sign of mockery, you know, to to show him that they regard him as this beggar who has no right to enter to enter Kazadum. But when he, when Thor refused to leave, uh, the orcs killed him, and the oh my God, this is actually the oh. oh, 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 oh. Actually, they are doing quite a lot of damage to me. Once again, I sort of underestimated them. It's really bad because now 
Sorry, you can die probably because of that. And maybe also they. Oh my god, I am such an idiot. That's really bad. Uh, yeah, but basically at this point the the orcs had uh, Thror killed, and the orc chieftain Azog uh, inscribed, uh, cut off his head, and then inscribed his own name uh, upon the corpse uh, with dwarven runes, uh, as to you know inform the dwarves who who it was that killed uh, that killed their king uh, to to sow fear into their hearts. So um, when the when uh, when Thor's son Thrain uh, heard of this event, he went silent for seven days and seven night seven nights and basically locked himself in his chamber and he didn't speak, he didn't uh, didn't do anything. He just uh, wailed for his father and tore his beard in a sign of grief because. Uh, as dwarves value their beards a great deal, uh, tearing out your own beard is basically the, um, the greatest sign of, of desperation and of, uh, and of utter despair for a dwarf. And after seven, seven days of sil Damn it, I'm really worried about Thorin now. Uh, after seven days of silence, Thrain said, this cannot be born. And then he uh, he sent envoys to all the seven all the seven houses of the dwarves that descended from the seven fathers of the dwarves, and basically he told them of what happened and told them. Grievous tidings! Our Damn it. lord has perished in the battle. Those dwarves who are left must fight on alone. <sighs> well, that is a sad thing. At least maybe Thorin will survive. I will, I will retreat him from the battle because I really would prefer him to, to live. Mm, yeah, but mm, but Thrain uh, gathered uh, the armies of the seven houses. It took him like three years, three years of, or something, quite a, quite a long time. But uh, nevertheless, the armies of the dwarves gathered because they were all. Uh, and infuriated by, you know, this uh, dishonor that was done uh, to the oldest, uh, to the heir of the oldest uh, of the, and the greatest of the dwarven fathers, the, um, the heir of Durin. So when the armies of the dwarves finally gathered, they started uh, basically genociding the orcs uh, from the top of the Misty Mountains down to Moria. They, they burned their villages, they uh, destroyed their hideouts, they slaughtered them en masse, uh, one by one destroying their armies, until, uh, and they basically cleaned uh, all the mountains of the Orc presence, until they finally, um, until they finally once again stood at the gates of Khazad-dûm, where once Thror uh, was killed. Um, and then happened uh, the last last battle of the war, the most bloody one. Uh, it was called uh, the Battle of Azamul Bizar, uh, for the dwarven name of the Vale, the Dimri, uh, the Dimri Vale, the Vale of uh, Vale of Shadow, something like that. The the place before the entrance, before the gate of Moria. So. Um, the Battle of Azamul Bizar was the greatest uh, in this conflict, and it was very bloody. And a couple of dwarves of importance uh, took place in this, uh, took uh, took part in this battle. Among them, for example, Thorin the Oakenshield. It was in fact uh, a clear victory to the sun. It was in fact this, this very uh, this very battle that he earned his his nickname. Because uh, when his shield shattered, he uh, he took a branch from an oaken tree 
and used it both as a shield to defend himself and as a uh, and as a club. So uh, so that was why he was called the uh, the Oaken Shield. Oh, and Thor is wounded too. Well, that was oh my God. So basically, he is now useless because he has minus four to hit points. So he's frail as a baby. Well. I screwed it up once again. Eh, at least it's more entertaining to watch, I guess. Uh, yeah, so uh, Thorin um, earned his fame that day, but also, um, but also Dane, uh, the, the, the very Dane that, that uh, just died, the Dane, the Ironfoot, uh, also took took part in this battle. But it is interesting because. He was very young at, uh, at the time. He was basically sort of a dwarven teenager, really. Uh, and it was actually him who killed Azok, the commander of the orcs. Because when Azok noticed that... First, Azok killed Dane's father, Nain. And then when he noticed that uh, the battle wasn't going his way, he decided to bail, basically. And uh, and uh, retreated back into Moria, but they followed him and killed him inside Moria. But then, um, you know, went out uh, again. And what is <laughs> what is cool and thematic is that after the dwarves um, after the dwarves uh, defeated Azok, they cut off his head. And they stuck it on a spike and put a, a coin uh, into his mouth, sort of uh, reminiscing the treatment he gave uh, to Thror. So, um, yeah, so um, the battle was won, but it was a pyrrhic victory because the dwarves have lost so much kinsmen that they weren't able to, to bury them all. Uh, they weren't able to carry them home to, to, to receive a proper burial, but they didn't, also didn't want to leave them uh, to be eaten by carrion and to, you know, to be feasted upon uh, by their enemies, so they decided to burn them. It was uh, a difficult decision for the dwarves because the traditional funeral of the dwarves is, um, you know, must always be set in stone. Um, but but they'd rather burn their fallen than, than let their bodies be desecrated. And from that day forward, whenever a dwarf uh, says about one of his ancestors that he was burned in the veil, uh, it is a sign of sort of, of great honor because it means that his ancestor uh, took part in this final final battle of the war between the orcs and the dwarves, and from from the day uh, from the day it was finished, whenever the uh, the battle of Azanul Bizar is referenced, it is said that uh, that the dwarves react with anguish and the orcs tremble with fear because it was such a great conflict for for both sides and with such uh, terrible loss terrible losses for both sides as well. Yeah, so after the battle, uh, Thrain, uh, even though he sustained heavy injuries, he actually lost his uh, his eye and he was heavily wounded in a... In a uh, um, his leg was heavily wounded, but he rejoiced and said uh, that, you know, that we have retaken Kassad Doom, but then uh, Dane, who was inside uh, Moria because he went there when he was chasing Azok, uh, said that even with all, even with one eye, the heir of Durin should be able to you know to see clearer because uh, he still felt the presence of Durin's bane of the Balrog when he was inside Moria, and um, the dwarves cannot return there because they have no power to to oppose the Durin's bane and. Some other times uh, must arrive until you know until they will be able to return to their home. So, uh, so once again, uh, basically, it was it was a moment of vengeance for the dwarves, 
but it was ultimately a hollow victory, really, because uh, neither they did recapture Castle Doom, and all the other houses, the great houses of the dwarves that were not of Durin's line, they basically said that we have no interest uh, in this Castle of Doom at all because it is not our home. We have proved our metal. The cowards and turn and run from our. At long last, the dwarves conquer yet and again. We wanted to to avenge the fallen heir of Durin, uh, but now, uh, but now that we did, um, and we didn't even have anything to get for it, any treasure or any consolation. We want just to forget about it and return home as quickly as we can. So they left the other the dwarves from, from the other great houses, and the line of Durin, Thrain among them, uh, was once again left uh, to wander the Middle Earth in, um, you know, in exile. So, oh, this is actually a good, uh, a good moment to talk about something that I really like about the previous Total Wars and, and that is missing in in the newer ones. The promotion of officers when you lead a force without a general and you win an impressive victory, the officer of the uh, of the force uh, has the possibility of being promoted to a general. It is, and he keeps the same name. Um, it is really cool and thematic, and it uh, sort of allows you to to craft your own narrative in a way, uh, and to you know to tell a story of a um, ordinary soldier that rose uh, that rose to fame, and uh, it's really cool. I, I really like it, and uh, I miss this feature, and I I don't really know why it was removed. Um, and uh, why exactly the ability to to move units without the without the presence of, of the general was removed? Because I really don't get it. What was gained uh, by this decision? It's um, it's simplifying the gameplay to me, and overall is a stupid decision. I don't agree with it, and it makes me irritated. Mm. Yeah, so it seems I am doing quite crappy in this campaign. I have... Yes. King Dan has been killed. He actually had a lot more cooler death uh, in the books, which was not mentioned in the movie, but I will tell you about it in some other episode because I've already rambled a little about history in this one. Yeah, so once again, I need to defend myself from the... Traitorous elves. Now, mm. yeah, so I am not doing so well, really. But it's not the end of the world yet. I lost a couple of battles, but overall, mm, I still should be able to to manage some kind of uh, you know some kind of resistance against the enemy. General, and it is more interesting this way, really, because General, if I would just steamroll everyone. Yes, that would be pretty boring and pointless. Awaiting In this way, at least, I have something to, you know, to reflect upon, such as my stupidity and my mistakes. Well, probably, in my defense, it is also partially caused by the fact that I need to, you know, to... to to make commentary uh, while while playing and also make commentary in a foreign language, no less. So, you know, it's a little difficult 
not that I am trying to excuse myself, um, I have never been that good at uh, Total War, but it is some justification, I think. Uh, it seems that uh, the settlement will re rebel shortly, which is really bad news for me because this army isn't in good condition. <sighs> Disasters travel in pairs, it is said. At least in Poland. I don't know if there is such a, an idiom in English as well. But in Poland it is said that uh, disasters, uh, disasters work in pairs, which basically means that when one thing goes wrong, uh, it is very probable that some other thing will shortly go wrong as well. Um, I managed to ceasefire with the... Okay, not at war here. Mm, okay, so I will move against the Easterlings. Although with some hesitation, but this small unit proves no, no, it's even the remnants, just the remnants of, of an army, so it proves no challenge for me. I'm more worried about Gram because, wait, what? I just promoted, I don't know, he... Oh, I gained a... Uh, mm, that's good, actually. That may be useful in... I will transport him to the... I will actually recruit miners, even though they are crap, crappy by urban standards, they are still pretty good compared to all the others, and they are available as mercenaries, which means... Mm, you are able to bolster your army, you know, in a quick, um, in a quick succession, which is um, quite useful in some moments when you are experiencing difficulty. Um, okay, so and turn. Oh, that is not good. Especially because they have chariots. No more moves. Now he's like the most crappy general I've ever seen. It seems I must wait for a for a larger force until I venture out um, to conquer the lands of the Easterlings again. So I will wait for this general to make his way to the settlement and. Mm, I will also take these units with me then. Mm. Okay, Gram is a little better. I will use mm, build a forge because that will make my dwarves uh, happier. I will also build a watchtower because Although no, because that will lower the public order. I will just wait. Mm. I was about to do something, but I can't remember what was that. I am at peace with the elves. Sort of. Okay, it seems that's all for the moment, so answer. Ah, it was moving the diplomat, but... Fortunately, no. Fortunately, he was sort of nearby. And they've also broken their alliance with me. Not that alliances matter much to the AI, as you've seen. Because uh, the AI is a bloodthirsty, bloodthirsty bastard. And it basically cares nothing for you know, uh, gentleman's agreement. Ah, mm. uh, 
I will lose, I will lose Gunda, but oh my god, I where did this? Ah, they came from here. I don't know why I didn't see this coming. It probably should be more of more complications each time. Well. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll go back to losing Gundabad uh, next turn, because it seems this episode is enough um, for now. So, uh, see you next time in the next episode when I will... when Gundabad will be taken by goblins. What a disgrace upon my ancestors. Okay, bye, see you in the next one.